Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. I'm super excited about today's topic. We're talking about how you can save thousands by going cashless with Tippy. I have co-founders of Tippy here today, and I'm so excited for you to meet them and learn their top three ways of how they're enhancing your salon operations by going cashless at your salon. Now, hold on a minute before I bring them to the mic. I got a few things to share with you. First off, if you love seeing the faces behind the voices, you got to go to Beyond the Techniques uh, YouTube page. Go watch our video podcast on our YouTube page, and you can see our raw, unedited videos of all of our podcast conversations. And by the way, while you're there, hit subscribe so that you can get notified every time a new video releases. And again, we couldn't do what we do here at Beyond the Technique if it wasn't for our sponsor. So a special thank you to Meet Your Stylist. What the heck is Meet Your Stylist? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Mm -hmm. If you're a salon owner with five or more stylists on your team, I know one of your biggest burdens is to make sure that you're getting guests in the seats of your team. And not only do you want to get them guests, but you want to make sure those guests actually come back again. We spend so much money on client acquisition we might as well make it count and ensure that they're going to come and return over and over again. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by controlling their experience before they even come into your salon. This is what Meet Your Stylist is about, is all about. Meet Your Stylist is a fun, easy, accurate matchmaking survey that converts your website visitors into lifetime clients. For those of you who are rocking your business through Instagram only, hey, you can use it there too. There's no better way to get and keep clients than meet your stylist. This is like the e-harmony of for hair salons. This goes above and beyond the logistics of matching people based on what services you provide. We've been doing that for years and yet our retention is under 30%. This is deeper, my friends. This is about personality profiling, love languages, lifestyle preferences, and values. There's nothing like it. Go to meetyourstylist.com and get your salon signed up today. Alrighty, everybody. I'm so excited. Terry and David are here from Tippy. We're talking about saving thousands, thousands by going cashless using Tippy. Let me just tell you a bit about them. Terry is an industry professional. He is the creative mastermind behind Tippy, but he couldn't have done it without his better looking brother-in-law, David, (laughs) who has a a background in Wall Street financial and business uh, knowledge and acumen and really had this incredible experience with payment processing. Together, they worked hard to launch this incredible platform. It's so needed in today's climate. And let me just tell you that Tippy is now used by salons all throughout the U.S., So today is going to be an awesome conversation. Everybody needs to be in on this. Please share this episode with the operation managers at your salon. They should know all of these financial know-hows and how this can benefit your team. So without further ado, help me welcome to the mic, Terry and David. Welcome to Beyond the Technique. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We're excited to be here. That's a great intro. Oh, well, we've already been laughing and having fun behind the scenes. So I'm excited for us to really dive into today's conversation. Okay, first off, I'm fired up to hear about Tippy. I'm curious though, Terry, you've been in the industry. Tell us a bit about your professional journey and how you kind of were thinking about Tippy. Yeah, so um, it's funny. I, you know, some people have heard the story, but I actually grew up in the industry. My mom cut hair, Um, you know, so grew up with every hairstyle you can think of as an 80s baby. I think I had every shape and length mullet you can think of um, as an 80s baby with, at the, the mom's a hairstylist. And then ended up not really going into the industry after school, uh, but ended up in the Lords and Ladies Salons in Pennsylvania where Tippy was kind of born as director of marketing there, um, was easily and quickly fell back in love with the industry. And that's kind of where Tippy, uh, the concept was born. You know, when I started to hear what the salon owner was, you know, Terry, who's also a partner of ours, uh, was paying his processing fees, I figured there had to be a better way. Oh, that's so cool. And then your, you know, wife marries, or your wife's sister marries this good looking guy, David. Yeah. Um, how did you two realize that you could potentially have a lot of people in this industry and 
how did that partnership come to? I'd love to hear from David too, just based on your background and how- I gotta tell you, my first introduction to Terry. <laughs> so I actually hired Terry's wife uh, to work on Wall Street with me. And she was working there just fantastically successful. And she bring, and I was of course related to her uh, through our mother-in-law. And she says, you've got to meet my new boyfriend I'm bringing in from Pennsylvania. So I'm on Wall Street, full suit, tie, you know, the whole regalia. In walks Terry, t-shirt, tats all over, spike, bleached hair, nose ring or whatever. <laughs> I meet him. I talk to him. I'm generously nice. He leaves. I turn to, to his wife and I go, what the hell are you thinking of? <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> that, that was the beginning of a fabulous relationship with the best partner I've ever had. So maybe first impressions, you were like, oh, this is sketchy, but there was something there. Tell us about how this spark and chemistry came between the two of you where you're like, hey, I think we might have something here with Tippy. Talk to me about the origin. Well, that was Terry's idea. Terry is the one, Terry came up with a concept. He came up with a foundation. He actually built a, a beta or an alpha test and, and ran in the salons, and, but knew he needed to, he wanted to take it to the next level because it was working so well at his salons. And from that, I'll turn it to you, Terry. You just knew I was smarter and better looking and wanted me to help. <laughs> and, I thought he was, and I thought he was younger. And Terry, but, there's so many people that are listening that are like, okay, tell me what, what is Tippy? Yeah. So the whole, the whole, like I said, the concept was, was there a way to save processing fees on the tips because it's not really earned income for the salon? But more importantly, was there a way to get the tip to, to personalize it again? You know, because cash, like I said, going off, you know, that paid or that was like, you know, I remember my mom getting the cash and that, that paid the bills that paid our dinners at night and grocery shopping or she would take me to Kmart and give me a GI Joe and she would hand me a five dollar bill because that was a tip she got. So is there a way to bring the personalization of tipping back, uh, but kind of with a digital spin? And like David said, we built, uh, I guess I, I would even call it an alpha version, to be honest. I built something that was pretty basic and I was so unsure about how it was going to work that I decided to put it in two different salons that I didn't work in. Uh, cause I didn't know, I didn't want to lose my real job. So it went so well. Uh, I, I figured we need to build this a little bit more legit, uh, and make it a real company. And that's where I'm picking David's brain. I'm like, Hey, I know, you know, he left wall street and was working for a cool payments company. Um, and I knew he knew the payment processing. So I would pick his brain. I think it was over a Christmas get together. And then I kind of begged him, I guess you would say, I said, listen, can you take as long as you want? But I, no one, I can't, I gotta get someone behind me on this. You know, I need to like make this work. And with your knowledge, I think we can make it work. Um, so we, we, I guess I convinced him well enough that he said, all right. He, and he literally took three months and he came back. I was very patient. It's probably the most patient I've ever been. Uh, he came back after three months and said, I did all the research. I uh, took everything you've given me. And there's definitely something here that has some legs. Let's do it. And that's kind of how Tippy was. So the whole idea was, again, letting clients to directly tip their stylist. And, you know, David can kind of give you a little bit more of a background of from that point forward, how it developed into something much bigger, honestly. Oh, I'd love to hear from you on that, David. And just to get a visualization of the lo logistics of, does this, is this a software that integrates with anybody's point of sale? Is it its own standalone kiosk type tablet? I've seen some images, but I'd love for you to just share a bit more about how does this work? We, we hear that this is going to affect, we don't have to pay those processing fees, which is awesome. And how, do, how does the salon implement this and what does that look like? Well, you just, uh, ironically, you pegged the biggest initial decision we had. Do we go to a POS and integrate? or do we start off on our own and remain agnostic? And uh, we originally did integrate with a small, with a POS, but to scale, when L'Oreal came in and saw what we were doing and wanted to team up with us and help distribute nationwide, we realized we couldn't be uh, tied in any single POS because there's so many POSs across the country. We wanted to provide every salon the same, same access. So we built our system out agnostically. So it is strictly plug and play. When somebody orders it three days later, a kiosk arrives. They take the kiosk, they put it on their front counter. It's all programmed. Our software is installed. It's all down from the cloud. But all they do is plug it into the wall and it's ready to go. The other instrument is all the Stylus mobile phone. They go to the web shop. They download our mobile app. 
they put in a code that ties their phone to that kiosk at the front counter so it works just in their salon and they're off to the races every time somebody gets a tip from that kiosk their phone goes cha-ching we've taken the information off the off the back of somebody's card we don't even ask the customer we take their name it comes in what they call track one down on the back of the card so uh, if terry for example tipped me twenty dollars my phone would go cha-ching and it would go hey Woohoo, Terry, Terry just tipped you $20. We've brought back the personalization, the old days when you could walk back and tuck 20 bucks in somebody's apron. It's so different now. Whenever anybody tips now, they're filling out a credit card receipt. It's impersonal. Nobody knows if the stylist is really gonna see that they tipped them $20. And it's that old theme. People will tip more if they know you know. If they don't, they tend to tip down. And that's what was happening in salons. Ironically, we weren't expecting this, but an added benefit to our system was we had stylists coming back to us and our salons going, oh my God, my tips are up 20 to 30%. We're like, it, it can't be. And we did a study and we understood psychologically what was going on at that front counter and tips on average at our seven salons were up over 30%. Wow. That's awesome news. And it's in to, for salon owners listening, they're like, okay, I love that. They're, the stylists are going to do well. It's more personalized. What kind of savings? We know this is thousands in, in the processing fees side of things. What kind of savings should salons expect by using Tippy? So uh, we're a very simple fee structure. We charge $300 a year. That's it. And that includes everything, your software, your support, your kiosk. And we, we install and maintain whatever the current kiosk is. Right now, we've got a, roughly a 10 inch iPad in a kiosk stand at the front with whole EMV reader and everything. But uh, we maintain all that. Um, it's $300 a year. No added costs, no extras, nothing, that's it. The average salon doing three quarters of a million to a million dollars a year will save between $2,500 and $3,000 a year. So obviously in a month or two, you make back your, your 300 bucks in no time and everything else is, goes right to your bottom line. I love this. I'm, and especially with the controversial FICA tip tax that we're trying to fight to remove, this kind of eliminates that issue. Well, we, you still, actually, you still, no matter what you do, the IRS will not let you in a commission salon, a salon bifurcate or separate tips versus payroll. So if you're paying payroll taxes on your payroll, you still have to pay it on your, on your tips. Now, we don't report to the IRS. What we do is provide a dashboard to the salon. All the tips that happen go into that dashboard if they want to pay FICA and pay payroll taxes and all that, they press a button. It passes, it's built to pass right through to their payroll, just as if you had used a credit card and paid on a point of sale. So effectively we are, we take what happens in a point of sale. We take the tipping part out. It reports back to them the same way as a point of sale, but we've got added benefits. We get the tips to the stylist real time. We get the tips up, 20 to 30 percent uh and some other benefits so it's it's effectively the pos on steroids okay that's amazing and and what about stylists so if i have stylists on the team do they need to simultaneously then keep track of their tips that they receive so they can put that into their you know tax information come tax time it is all on their phone that's a beautiful thing we built an app Terry's whole initial vision was not only saving the, the salon the money, Terry was very much about, because our mother-in-law was, was behind the chair all her life, was very much about empowering the stylist. And this empowers the stylist. We give them the mobile app. On that mobile app is their entire tip business. And you know, tipping can be 25% of their income yeah. or it can be 15% of their income. If they are provided a tool, we found that they embrace it. And, and they can get their tips up substantially, but it provides them the full history. And in their mobile app, uh, all the information is there. They can even say, hey, David's coming in this afternoon. Let me check out his tip history. They tap David's name on the phone and up pops the last 12 months of tips from David 
summarized. Um, hey, David's been tipping you an average of 21.3%. His average tips $22. He last tipped you on this date. He's giving you 12 tips this year. So wow. it's got everything built in. And if they're in a bank getting a loan and they want to show their, uh, they want to see their tip history for the banker, they press a button, it creates a CSV file, it's emailed right over. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Okay, so- I think you touched on some there too, which is yeah. the motivation part of it. You know, it, there's there's the, well, what, like Dave said, the one thing too is tips go up, we've seen it, but we also, I think there's also the ones that don't realize how much they're getting in tips. It's kind of like, it's rolled in the payroll, you don't pay attention to it, or you're taking the cash, you put it in your pocket and spending it, now you put a focus on it and realize like, it's 20 to 30% of your income, you know, it, it's a big deal, you know, and then the, that instant that, you know, David's favorite part was when the phone goes woohoo or goes, you know, or actually it goes cha-ching, you know, it's like a cash register sound and, you know, that's that motivation you need. Um, and we even saw it just in our own salons at Lords and Ladies where uh, our treatment services went up and Lauren, our success manager, you know, I, I was like, why, you know, why are they, why are they going up? Because we're still working there and, um, we've come to find out that they realized, hey, if I do this uh, fusio dose or power dose treatment at the bowl and I get a 20, 25 dollar treatment at the bowl, my tip, I'm going to get a bigger tip instantly. You know, I might get a couple bucks of commission on the treatment, but I'm going to get a couple bucks extra on my tip. Um, and then, you know, Apple Watch goes off and they're like, oh my God, I just got a 30 hour tip instead of 20. Um, you can imagine all the treatment services went up, right? <laughs> it was that instant gratification, you know, and it kind of, re it kind of gets you going like, Hey, I did my consultation. I did everything that I've been told to do. And by doing all that, and I made sure that I finished the hair right. And I walked the client out and I got the client their coat and helped them out the door. And I got a great tip because of it. You know, next client rolls in, you go and do the same thing again. It's that motivation. That's a recognition that I think uh, that we all look for to be honest, but especially in this industry. Well, and I think there's a big movement for cashless. Tell us about what you're seeing, because I know you're busier than ever, because salons want to go cashless. Talk to me about what you what do you think, uh, this is going to stick probably. What do you think about the cashless movement and how um, are you a big time contributor to helping with that? Yeah, I think we, uh, I mean, we over doubled our size of our company, you know, during this kind of crisis, you know, which is good and bad. You know, you don't, you, you don't hope it to happen in this kind of circumstance, but you know, it is what it is. And it is because of people wanting to go cashless and we're kind of, we're, we're, in a, we're a great in between for cashless. You know, you can go with mobile payments and you can go to the, the card on file, uh, you know, which are all great options. But one thing we focus on is just the tips and we can keep doing that and remain cashless as well, or sorry, cashless and contactless. Um, sorry, David, you're going to say. I was just going to say it, it's, it is sad to say that it, it, that COVID did this, but on the heels of COVID, we're kind of the Zoom of the salon front desk. You know how Zoom rocket shift and vaulted through COVID. Same thing happened to us. You know, the first few weeks we were like, "Oh my God, what are we going to do now?" Yeah. And we watched. We literally watched our salons close one by one by one, down to zero revenues. Like, oh man. And the first thing we did was we built a, we had a lot of salons calling going, oh my God, our stylists are at home. We've got customers calling going, how can I get money to help my stylist? How do I get money to her? And so we quickly, over an eight day period, we built what we call Tip It Ford. Mm -hmm. Terry did a great job of branding that. We got that out there. We, so all our salons now have kind of this Tip It Ford insurance. So if they have to shut down for COVID, um, they have a website that we've set up branded to that particular salon and we provide them an email they send out to their clients that says, Hey, you know, through these times, if you're interested in helping your stylist out, um, just click here. They click there and it's the same setup as in the salon up on their laptop or their mobile phone comes the stylist pictures. You tap your stylist, you tip 10, 25 or $50 or a custom amount and you can do a message in there, send her a message and it goes right through and they get it immediately. So we had stylists who were sitting at home trying to figure out the first couple of months how they were going to pay rent because unemployment took so long to get through. And, and uh, in a matter of two or three days, bing, bang, they get $500 or $750 on average from that. So it was really cool. But that, uh, that took us on through this. And, and like Terry said, it's, it's more than double our business coming out. Yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, 
that was pretty neat to see, you know, to see clients love their stylist or, you know, massage therapist or esthetician that much that they're sending hundred, two hundred fifty dollar tips to them with a message. Hey, I'm thinking about you. Can't wait to get in. Don't know when that's going to be, but I'll be there. I'll be the first on the list. We keep joking. We said, we think that they were buying their, their uh, booking slots for when they did open. They're like, don't forget 8 a.m. the first day. Don't forget about that tip I gave you. Um, but it was just neat to see that. And even when the doors open back up, to see the amount of tips that rolled through, just the appreciation of them. Hey, you're here. You're wearing a mask. It's not normal for you. It's not normal for us. But we want to appreciate you on this very first visit. And over, the over tipping was crazy. And we're still seeing it, to be honest. I mean, tips are higher than that. Like the average uh, across the nation is higher than it was pre because I think people just appreciate it more. Um, it, it's a, it, it kind of forced us to think of like, what do we really need? And the other thing we launched too, which I don't even think we got talked to pre, you know, pre-interview was um, we launched a real-time payment. It's a real-time uh, tip option. So now the, the stylist can literally sign up with us if their salon opts into it. They can actually get their tips instantly. So if uh, David, I cut David's hair and he tipped me, I don't have to wait you know, for it to go into my bank account the next day. I actually get it within seconds. So I can go buy lunch with that tip. Uh, I, you know, they get a, a, a card from us, which is it's even more instant. That's our goal was to just put a focus on tips and make it gratifying and instant. Oh, that's so cool. Is there any reason why a salon wouldn't want to join? Have you even gotten, I guess, pushback or any objections? Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I could imagine if there's any kind of fear out there, it's like, oh, is this going to take forever to set up? I mean, what would be an yeah. objection that would possibly be common that you're like wanting to speak into right now to really? I got it. Yeah. Yes. And this is coming from somebody who's spent their whole life outside the industry. And Terry tried to explain this to me, and I didn't believe it till I saw it. Terry told me, if you go into a salon and you've got five styles and you walk back one day and say, I know we carry these three different product lines. We're moving one product line off and changing it. Three of the five styles will quit and the other two will threaten suicide. <laughs> you know, it's, it's change. They're coming after you. He likes change. And when you're dealing with money and their money, in their minds, oh my God, something wrong is going to happen here. They're trying to screw me somehow. What's going on? And it's just changed. And no salon likes to go through, and they shouldn't have to go through change if it's, it's, it's tough. So uh, we have built out a really cool support team to aid that along. And our support team, everyone Terry has working up there on a support team, has worked behind the chair at one of our salons. So they know how to help, how to train, how to talk, and how to soothe people and, and assure them they're not about to get screwed. It's actually going to benefit them. Yeah. But that's the biggest thing. Any, ch any change for a salon owner, you know, it requires some work. It requires a little bit of time and devotion. We, we've, I mean, that's been our priority. You know, David's right, and, it's, and I get it. You know, change of any, any of us is always tough, no matter what it is, even your personal life or business. But um, we've we put a big focus on that. And it, it starts with our system is plug and play. You plug it into the wall, connect to Wi-Fi, and that is it. There's no integration needed. And it, there's, it's risk-free the first 30 days. You know, so you can opt into it and it's risk-free. Of course, we say, obviously, if you do do it, we want to make sure all your staff buys into it. Don't let one person do it and not, because you know how that goes. Um, you know, put it in, commit to it, um, and we guarantee you, you're going to want to keep it. And that's why we make it risk-free. And to make it that easy to put in for the owner and then to make it that easy for everyone to download the app, it's that easy to sync your bank account um, and then to have a team back it up that can answer every question, whether it's a stylist, the front desk or the owner, and we can answer all that and have a team that, uh, like I said, can talk to talk and walk to walk. You know, we, we take all the risk out of it. And that's kind of, you know, and we get that. Yeah, and, and I mean, we know that as a company, we know that from this industry. So th that's where we saw the headaches and we saw some of the, the friction and we, we do our best to get rid of that. That's awesome. And I know you mentioned it was an investment of about 300 per year. Is there any upfront, I guess, investments for the actual equipment? Nope, nope. that's all included. So that's the trade-off, $300 a year. 
you know, this potentially save $3,000 a year. You know, and that's where being very, very biased in marketing, I would say, hey, what would you do with $3,000 in savings for marketing? I mean, that's a, you know, pretty ongoing uh, Facebook campaigns you can do around like holiday gift cards or, you know, maybe use that money during the slow times to do some social media ads. Um, you know, of course, if you weren't talking to a marketing person, they would tell you to put it towards the education or, you know, or maybe bring in, a, you know, CMB or somebody that your team's going to love or do some cool contests with your staff. But 300 hours to save a couple thousand hours is, not you know, it's obviously a very good, uh, great trade-off. Yes, you can join Meet Your Stylist and bring Sam ability or salon or Andrew. <laughs> yeah, you, you can, can do a lot with it. <laughs> you can make it work for you. I love it. Okay, this is awesome. So I'm curious just on the tech scene and side of things um, with David's background in Wall Street and yours in creative marketing and the salon industry. What was your biggest obstacle in starting a tech company? They, um, I mean, one, the fact that I was in payments and not knowing a lot about that. You know, I, I'm so visual, so I knew how I wanted to work and look. Uh, I did learn to be very patient, like I said, you know, for not being a very, you know, right brain ADD kind of mind. Um, it's forced me to be patient. And then to really realize that you have to prove the concept. And we are, we are fortunate enough to have a great launch pad like Lords and Ladies, you know, a seven location salon. You can't ask for a better launch pad, um, you know, for, you know, for a product or a, a concept at that time. You know, it's like, so to learn that part of it and then to really figure out, okay, now how many, after that, who do you go to? that's going to be a good partner to test this with you. You know, who's going to take this thing and really give you the feedback you need. And then, um, you know, and how you're going to build a sales channel to kind of get it out there. You really have the product side of things and the user experience, it sounds like. Um, so I'm glad that everything has gone so well for both of you. And what a huge relationship to be partnered with L'Oreal and Salon Centric. So, uh, congratulations on all that you've done in such a short amount of time, you know, just launching in 2019. I'm curious, what do you see in the future of Tippy, or are, is your main mission getting this in more hands of salon owners and professionals? Oh my God, it's so funny. Somebody asked us that earlier today, and we had to sit back and think for a few minutes. Uh, you know, COVID's given us some time to think too. Um, there, there are two things. One is obviously getting more and more customers. And we've got some, some new ideas on where we're going to go and who we're going to partner with to do that. Uh, the other fascinating thing is technology is moving as fast or faster than we are. And the things we're able to do now, we're realizing when we had time to sit down through COVID and take a look at all the different segments of our software, we're realizing some other things we have that we weren't thinking about using. For example, um, we, we can pay people when they sell products. If, if a salon wants to really get people motivated and uh, they want to effectively tip them or spiff them every time they sell a bottle of something that they're trying to sell, they can sell that bottle and we can have them paid and that money in their bank account so they can walk next door and buy the lunch from just selling that bottle. And it's amazing the motivational incline when you can get them paid instantly rather than tossing five bucks extra into their payroll two weeks later. They will sell more and more quickly. So we're, we're finding uses like that. We're, one other fascinating use for some of our larger chains is uh, these larger chains that, oh my God, we've been trying to get, we've got one chain with 2,600 stylists. Um, they've been trying to get a corporate website set up or, and get everybody downloading an app on their phone. And they couldn't get more than 8% of their stylists to download an app for that company. But with us, since it's their money, we had every single one of those stylists within a week have the app on the phone. They've got a corporate network. Now the company can communicate through that network with all the stylists. They can run contests, they can do things, they can pass along corporate news. All these things that we realize we've kind of got these pods of software that we can use in different ways. And I think one of our big challenges over the next 12 months is figuring out how to keep up with technology and grow those opportunities. Wow, that's incredible. Terry, did you want to add to that? No, that was, I was saying well put. I think it, it, the back of David saying it's, 
we realize, I mean, obviously we're very biased, but we realize that tips are pretty cut and dry and they're very, very telling if you think about it. You know, and I think that's where like David's saying about the contest, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it really is like a personal review. It's like the Uber review. Yeah, and you know, tips are <laughs> tips are gonna tell you whether a client or not had a good service or not. Yeah, you know, they're gonna help get services up. They're gonna help get retail up. Um, you know, it's really easy to hit five star, but when you're rating somebody with your money, you know, you're gonna be pretty truthful. And I think that's where we've been able to help some of these like, large, like Dave said, larger chains. And I think we're working on how we do it for others. Um, you know, use tips as kind of like a motivator and a rating and kind of you know. It helped us that not just help the owner, but help the stylists make more. You know, that's always our goal. You know, they're the stylists are our end user, and that's who we want to make sure they make a lot of more money um, and become even more professional. Well, I love it. And if everybody listening, of course, we're going to have in our show notes links for you to connect with Tippy through their website and Instagram. But what does it take to get started with Tippy? $300 in three days. We literally can have the terminal sitting on your desk three days from your commitment. Um, it is very minimal training. We train your front desk, but uh, that can, once they receive a terminal, we can train them in an hour, have them up and run. Everybody downloads the app and you have them running next day. And after you go to meet your stylist, then you go to meet tippy. Yes. <laughs> well, we're going to have to do some collabs here because this has been a ton of fun. Um, as we're nearing the end, what would be just some words of encouragement for salons, even though this can feel uncertain, this could be a great time for them to join Tippy. What would you want kind of your final words of encouragement to be to everybody listening today? Well, most importantly, good luck to everybody going through what everybody's going through. It's, it's an unprecedented time and God bless everybody for, for having, having to put up with all that. Um, secondly, we are, you know, we're, anybody signs up with us, we're their partner. If they're going through a tough road, like we, we didn't charge people through COVID or anything like that, we're there to work with you. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for us. So that's why we set it up to, to try it for free. Get it, try it for free. If you don't like it, put it in the box and send it back. The beauty is it doesn't touch anything else. Awesome. Well, I just appreciate you both being here and we're definitely going to have to continue the conversation in future episodes. So um, thank you for your time today and just for bringing something incredible to our industry for salon owners and hairstyles everywhere. So thank you both. Well, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. So much. Good luck to you. Thank you. My pleasure, you guys. And thank you pig. What's that? We're sending you a tippy pig. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> We like pigs up here in Wisconsin. Bacon and beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so much fun. Look, we love everybody listening. Thank you for your loyal listenership. If you love today's conversation, we would just be so thankful if you could take a few moments to leave us a positive review so that more people like you will discover beyond the technique where we know we are changing the way salon owners are supported in their business. Stay strong, everybody. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you next time.